So let's talk about camera movement in this one. And we've got obviously the Movi here. We have the shuttle pod. Um, you want to talk to me a little bit about some of the stuff that you guys think about and what you're going to be using on this shoot? Well, for me, well, it starts when I'm writing. Like when I'm writing, I'm sort of seeing it as as it progresses. And then uh, once I'm getting into you know the next phase where I'm doing my shot list and I'm thinking about what I want this full piece to look like and feel like, um, it's more off instinct. Like how should this thing feel? And it, this thing it, right here, it feels more still. And then I start putting logic to it. Okay, why does it feel more still? Make sure that I'm right in those choices. And up front, we're far more still because nothing's really happening first. We're in this, you know, uh, this monotone life that he lives. So everything's a little bit locked down. And then it starts loosening up a bit once things really start hitting the fan. Right. Um, there was also a conscious decision to go a lot more locked off than either of us usually do. Uh, because we're doing a lot of the effects. Once we go outside and the more motion that's happening, the harder that's going to be in post. And this right. is all short deadline, you know, low budget type stuff. So the harder we make it for our VFX artists, the more that budget's increasing, you know, the harder it's making everything. So that was, there was a practical decision uh, there too. But even our opening shot, which Ryan talked a little bit about before, that opening shot was designed to bring us into his world. And we're, we're moving the entire time while he's doing this web show because this web show opens him up to something greater. So his world is active in some way. But the second he stops that, the camera stops moving as well. So there's these little ideas right. that go behind all these movements for me. So on this short, we're going to be using three, basically choosing three ways to stabilize the camera. First would be shuttle pod um, to give us kind of that nice dynamic movement. Right. And then we'll be doing a lot of stuff on sticks. Um, and then basically as kind of the character discovers what's happening outside, we're going to use the Movi to kind of help give us a nice kind of smooth movement as he works his way out um, to kind of discover what's happening outside. And how are you thinking about motivating your shots for camera movement? What's your thought process when you're doing that? You know, because there's different schools of thought in terms of when you move a camera and how motivated that movement has to be. Do you think about that? And Yeah, this one's very motivated. There's very little non-motivated movement. I think I have one shot in the entire thing because I want it to feel like the audience whipping their head from one thing to the other. Mm -hmm. Everything else, even in this shot, uh, we motivate our movement up to Ned with his grab of the candy bar really revealed to our character, which of course is that candy bar too who that character ends up being. Right. And then everything else, he's leading our camera everywhere we go. When, even when we go outside, he's leading us that way. And our camera's like the audience just following him through this story. Um, so this one's extremely motivated. We've followed Ned through everything. You guys have this set up now, and I'm taking a look at the setup. So you've got, you've got the C100 Mark II up on, uh, which movie are you guys using? Uh, this is the M10. Okay, so you've got that. What lens? We're using the 16 to 35. Right. We we'll shoot closer on the 35 uh, range, just because it's. I think we're gonna we're gonna be doing some wide and kind of ending on a tight, and I think 35 kind of gives you the best kind of feel in both of those yeah. angles. But you guys are planning on using the dual pixel CMOS autofocus feature. Yes. And you and I were actually playing with it once yeah. uh, you had this set up. So yeah. you want to talk me sure. through that a little bit? In, in this environment where we're still trying to kind of do it in a more DIY, lower budget place, we're not going to have rails with a wireless system and a, you know, a first who's going to be pulling focus for us as we're right. moving around. And so, um, yeah, we, we threw this lens on and put on the, the dual pixel autofocus, and it's like, it's really awesome. I think we're going to be able to get accomplish what we want, which I you know, a lot of times if you don't, aren't able to put, um, you know, a wireless system on, then you kind of, you set your focus and then you just kind of, it's up to the operator to kind of keep the distance from the subject. And, right. but we're going to come slamming in on a close up on that door handle. So there's going to be quite a bit of movement. There's going to be a big difference between kind of where the shot starts and where we end up for sure. So, um, I mean, we, we ran a little test of it a little bit earlier and it looks great. We didn't even have your lights up. No. When, yeah. Mm -hmm. When we're doing great. it. So AF on, uh, shooting closer to 35, mm -hmm. we're using dual pixel CMOS AF, and then we were having some discussions, and I was showing you guys the Wi-Fi remote a little bit. Yeah, right. yeah. So, Which, yeah, I was gonna see if you could sh walk us through a little bit because um, we want to try a couple of things that um, basically our autofocus might be moving around. Yeah. Like, so you go into other functions in the menu, and then you go into network settings, and you have to go through a few steps to create an ad hoc Wi-Fi network. And for people who don't know what an ad hoc network is, it doesn't rely upon you guys having a Wi-Fi connection. There doesn't have to be Wi-Fi in the right. space. The camera becomes... It just yeah. generates its Got own it. basically IP address. Right. And then you can connect to that IP address 
um, using a tablet or a smartphone Can you or do a, laptop? a laptop. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. So anything, basically, a web browser comes up. You type in a, an IP address, oh, okay. and there's a default IP address that's generated by the camera. So once you memorize that, unless you want to change it, it's right. really easy. You name the camera, you give it a password if you want. You know, there are some security features in there. But sure. in most situations, you just go through the least number of steps possible to set up the Wi-Fi remote. And then once it's set up, then you can take you know, a tablet like this, and when you turn it on, there are two different modes that you have. So right now we're in the advanced mode and I can actually turn on live view and you'll see that we're seeing picture. Cool. Yeah. So there's our picture. And for you, Booth, yeah. if you were, and we can even see battery level. So nice. that's, you know. <laughs> um, I would say that for you, you could probably see this, if you were DPing and you weren't operating, right. there might be some advantages to this mode with you holding this. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can see some of the things you can do. We can change Kelvin temperature yep. or our white balance. We can change aperture. You can change your shutter angle, your nice. ISO, um, start stop, you know, your iris. And for me, kind of a really cool one, we were talking about dual pixel CMOS AF. There's actually the AF lock button in here in advanced mode. Yeah, that one, especially for days, seems like uh, the most helpful for us. Yeah, right, yeah. for sure. So for you, for somebody who has a lot of experience, you know, with equipment and shooting, then you would probably just stay inside of the advanced mode, Ryan. So then you could just right. go ahead and start and stop the camera. Right. Because you're going to... Yeah, I'll be already in the middle of... Because uh, you are operating. Starting yeah. the shot, yeah. And that's going to be a real pain. <laughs> Not yeah. have to throw hands around. Yeah. Right. Which is also a time saver. Yeah. Time saver, yeah. definitely. And then you can also activate the AF lock. Which yeah. is great. Um, I like to actually just rotate this sometimes and say, okay, so what if you had a situation, and then again, I'll turn on live view, where you just wanted to give this and hand it to somebody like a director. It's a really simple mode. Yeah, or somebody else on the crew. Um, I mean, even like a PA, mm -hmm. you know, where you're calling action or something like action, and then that person's starting the camera. Yeah. And so you, again, don't have to reach over and yeah. do that kind of That's stuff. That's great. So um, this would work really well with a jib too. Yeah, anytime that you want to rig this camera in a place that you can't get to easily, right? right. And you don't want to get into the complexities of what exists right now in terms of controlling cameras remotely. And there's a lot of stuff out there. Yeah, I mean, sure. there's some really cool stuff. Then uh, I think a jib is a, a perfect thing. I think too, like um, you know, the autofocus is is great, right. but being able to kind of control when and how you want it to be focusing just allows you to basically shoot for longer. Because I, I tend to like really long takes, especially mm -hmm. with Movi, lets you do some stuff that you couldn't do otherwise. And I think being able to kind of have someone where if you were to choreograph where you wanted things to happen, where you could yeah. kind of lock it and unlock it and lock it and unlock it, then you could go for a lot longer um, before you, you know, yeah. blow a shot, basically. Yeah, so. yeah basically, yeah. <laughs> Rolling. Rolling! And which way you want me to turn up from right? Right side or left side? Right side. And action. Lamp. TV. Shelf. Rattle. Rattle drops. Something's outside. Start walking it in. Pull it! Start walking it in. Turn. Pull. Cut! A couple other things I want to ask you guys about related to this. Um, the one thing I did notice on this, because I have a C100 and I have a, an M5 Movi, mm -hmm. is you guys don't have a microphone uh, rigged on here. Like I right. gaff tape a video mic pro sometimes and now I have a, a nice mount that goes onto the actual tube. It's mm. a little more elegant. Um, <laughs> but but uh, there's no mic on there. To me, no. this is kind of huge. Yeah, I mean, we have it in cam. So I mean, Ryan can strip down as far as he needs to strip down, uh, you know, to get the shot a lot easier. Dropping weights, not as cumbersome. 
uh, to have that on there. And we really only need scratch audio for the stuff we're doing with the movie. We're not really doing a lot of dialogue or anything like that. It's more motion type stuff. So right. we just need that scratch so we we can hear the space, know the space. So when I you know, pass it off to my sound designer. He has something to build on top of. He's not just bringing it. So forward. a little bit of ambience in there right. to do that. So right. having just that. Just reference, really. Just yeah. so he knows what it feels like, sounds like, what's happening in that moment. Last thing I want to talk to you guys about, mm -hmm. which is I know something you're going back and forth with together. Um, you know, you go into the codex on this camera, which we talked about in another video. We're in ABC HD, 28 megabits per second. We can do 59.94 progressive. Mm -hmm. So if you want to conform and post, you can do it. And we can get a slow-mo shot, which is nice. You have that control. Mm -hmm. But we can also go into MP4, and you can do a 60 over 24. So you can actually conform in camera. And you guys are talking a little bit maybe about tomorrow doing a shot and shooting it both ways. Is that right? Right. Yeah. 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 Just so we have, you know, we have this idea of, you know, when he's first coming out, maybe everything kind of stops for a second for him before we ramp everything right back up again because he's seeing this thing he's always wanted. So trying it both ways, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but it's an idea that we thought might be cool, so we're going to give it a shot. So you go into the menu, MP4, uh, 24 megabits per second, choose, you know, and then you have to go into fast and slow motion yep. and set it up so it conforms in camera. And so you're going to have a lot of stuff to get done. So you're going to be rocking and rolling pretty yeah, hard. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Absolutely. Good. And Josh is getting into the suit soon. Yeah. he's. It's probably happening right now, potentially. Yeah. Good. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to let you guys get into sort of all of that stuff. Yeah, right. And uh, thanks, guys, so much. You got it. Cool.